Welcome back everybody to Work and Energy and today we're going to be talking about elastic potential energy along with kinetic and potential energy. Let's look at this. Elastic potential energy is potential energy stored as a resort or a deformation of an elastic object such as the stretching of a spring or I should say stretching or compressing of a spring. Uh, this is the formula elastic potential energy is equal to one half kx squared. Something else we should already know is force of a spring is equal to kx. And just know the elastic uh, potential energy is, depend is dependent on how much it's compressed and how much it's stretched. All right, so let's go into this. Uh, mm -mm -mm. All right, so let's look at this. When a force of 120 newtons is applied to a certain spring, it causes a stretch of 2.25 uh, centimeters. What is the spring constant? Okay, so we see we're going to pull this a length of 2.25 centimeters or 0 0.0225 meters. So it's out of equilibrium by 2.25 centimeters. So we know the force. We're going to put force of the spring equals kx. So we're going to put a, apply a force of 120. We don't know what the spring constant is. That's what we're looking for. And we're going to be stretching it 0 .0, oops, 0 0.0225. And then we should get what the spring constant is going to be equal to. So I'm going to do 120 time, or divided by 0 0.0225. And I get 5,333. Okay. Whoops. 5,333. And a lot of times you're going to see this as a pretty big number. Not always, but sometimes. What is the potential energy of this spring when it is compressed by 3.5 meter, centimeters? So this time, now we're going to be compressing this 0 0.035 meters. Okay. And we're going to find what the potential energy is. Uh, so we know elastic potential energy. Uh, how should I write this? Actually, I'm going to write it like this. Elastic potential energy is equal to 1 half kx squared. So this is going to be 1 half k, which is 5,333, uh, x squared, which is going to be 0 0.035 squared. And let's kind of write that all down. So 0 0.5 times 5,333 times 0 0.035 squared. And we can see that there's 3.3 joules of energy if we can spread, compress the spring that much. Okay, moving on. A glider with a mass of 0 0.2 kilograms is on a frictionless air track, which is connected to a spring with a spring constant of 5 newton per, newton per meter. You stretch the spring 0 0.1, uh, 0.1, you stretch the string point one and release it from rest. The glider moves uh, moves toward its equilibrium position. What is its velocity when it is equal to 0 0.08? So I think this means 0 0.1 meters. Okay, so let's look at this. So we are stretching this 0 0.1 meters and then we're releasing it from rest. And then later on, it's 0 0.08 meters away. And we want to know how fast it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to do mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final. Uh, what I like to do is I like to write everything out. So potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial plus elastic potential energy initial. This is all going to equal potential energy final plus kinetic energy final plus elastic potential energy final. You don't always have to, but this way you're safe. And you think about what's happening at, at, at the beginning and what's happening at the end. So at the beginning, is there potential energy? No, it's on the ground. So this is zero. At the beginning, is there kinetic energy? No, it's not moving. It's at rest, released from rest. Is there kinetic energy? Yes, it is stretched. So we know there is kinetic, uh, elastic potential energy at the beginning. At the end, is there potential energy? No, it's still at, uh, it's still on the ground. Is there kinetic energy? Yes, it's moving. So there, it is moving, 1FV squared. And is it stretched? Yes, it is stretched, or is it compressed, I should say. Uh, but yes, it is, 1 half kx squared. So let's start filling things out. 1 half. K is equal to 5. X is equal at the beginning to 0.1 squared, which is equal to 1 half M, which is 0.2. V squared, that's what we're looking for, plus 1 half K, uh, which is a 5. And the X, it's now stretched to 0 0.08. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the 1 halves because it's in every part of this equation. And I'm going to start to figure this out. 0.1 squared times 5 minus 5 times 0.08 squared. 
uh, divided by 0.2. Then we get a velocity of 0 0.3 meters per second. Okay. Okay. Now moving on. A mass is pressed against a horizontal spring on a frictionless surface. After being released from rest, the mass acquires a maximum speed V and a maximum kinetic energy K. If the mass was initially compressed twice as far, the maximum speed will be 2V. Oh, uh, if the mass was in, uh, initially compressed twice as far, the maximum speed will be 2V and the maximum kinetic energy will be 2K. Um, the maximum speed will be 2V and the maximum kinetic energy will be square root 2K. Maximum speed will be square root 2v, and maximum kinetic energy will be 2k. The maximum square uh, speed will be 2v, and maximum kinetic energy will be 4k. Well, let's figure this out. So at the beginning, there's elastic potential energy, and all of that energy turns into kinetic energy. So we know that the formula is... Whoops. We know the formula is 1 half kx squared, and this is going to be equal to 1 half mv squared. Actually, yeah. Actually, let me write this a little better. I'm going to give some more space so we have room to work with this. So we know 1 half k x squared is going to be equal to 1 half m v squared. So it's saying if the mass was initially compressed twice as far, what would happen? So what we know is if this was compressed twice as far, that means that over here, this whole side is going to change by a factor of 4. Which means this whole side will also change by a factor of 4, meaning kinetic energy will change by a factor of 4 as well. So we can see that this is the right answer. It's going to be D. But let's also prove it with 2. So if this changes by a factor of 2, that means this side has to change by a factor of... Uh, I mean, if this side changed by a factor of 4, it has to also be changed by a factor of 4. And if we double the velocity it'll also change by a factor of 4. So that means, again, it proves this one is correct. Okay, I hope that made sense. You can play around with numbers and see what happens when you double this number, but this is how you can do it uh, without plugging in random numbers. Okay, moving on. A spring guard gun shoots a dart straight up into the air and reaches a height of 24 meters. The same dot is shot with the same gun, but this time the spring is compressed only half as far. How far does the dart go up this time? Okay, so similar kind of thing. Okay, let's, let's kind of just draw this out. So we have something here. It gets sprung up and goes a certain distance, h. So what we know is if we look at this uh, top point and the bottom point when it starts moving, all this elastic potential energy turns into all uh, gravitational potential energy. Okay, so we know this is going to be 1 half kx squared is equal to m, whoops, <laughs> m, g, h. And what we're doing this time is we're only going to compress it half as far. Because when we compressed it, a certain amount, it went 24 meters. But now we're going to compress it half as much. So if we change this by a factor of a half, that means this whole side changes by a factor of a fourth. And that means this, the whole side on this side has to change by a factor of fourth. So this height is going to change by 24 divided by 4, which is going to be equal to 6 meters. Okay, So we know that it has to change by a factor of 4, which means the mass isn't going to change by a fourth. Gravity isn't going to change by a fourth. But that means the height is going to change by a fourth. So if it was originally 24 meters, now it's going to be going up 6 meters. Okay. Uh, there is a mathematical way of doing this, but I hope that that made sense. Okay, so another way, you, yeah, so there are different ways you could have done this. Okay, all right, let's look at this. Okay, this one's a bit more tricky because uh, it has both potential energy, kinetic energy, and elastic potential energy all involved. So let's look at this. A ball of mass 2 kilograms is dropped from a height of 1.5 meters. As we can see here, it's dropped. Onto a massless spring. The spring has an equilibrium length of 0.5 meters. The ball compresses the spring by an amount of 0.2 meters. Okay. Uh, by the time it comes to a stop, calculate the spring constant of the spring. Okay. So we again, we want to look at all the energy. I'm going to write it all out again. Mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. And actually, before we do that, we want to make a zero line. 
and we could put it anywhere, but I always like to put the zero line at the lowest point that the object goes. So I'm going to be putting it right here. This is the zero line. Uh, that means that this is going to be, if that's 0.2 and that's 0.5, that means this is going to be 1.2 meters. So this is going to be 1.2 meters from the zero line. Okay, let, let's figure this out. So let's write all of it out. We have potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial plus elastic potential energy initial is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final plus elastic potential energy final. Potential energy initial is going to be equal to, uh, at, at the beginning, is there potential energy? Yes. Uh, it has a certain height. At the beginning, is there kinetic energy? No, it's dropped, so this is zero. At the beginning, is there elastic potential energy? No, it's not compressing or stretching anything, so that's zero. At the end, is there potential energy? No, it's on the zero line, so that's zero. At the end, is there kinetic energy? No, it comes to a stop, so that means there's no kinetic energy. At the end, uh, is it stretched or compressed? Yes, so there is uh, elastic potential energy. So let's all write this out. Mass, 2. Gravity, 10. Height, 1.2. That's how far it is from the zero line. Is equal to 1 half K, which we're looking for. X is compressed 0.2 meters. Now let's try to figure out K. Okay. So we have 2 times 10 times 1.2 times 2 divided by 0.2 squared. And we should get around 1,200 Newton per meter. Okay. I know I did that kind of quickly. There was a lot going on. But I personally do suggest when you have like a harder problem like this to write it all out and think about all the energy at the beginning and all of the energy at the end. Okay, that's a good step of how to solve these problems. Okay, let's look at this example. Conceptual example number six. A box of mass M is pressed against a spring of spring constant K, compressing the spring a distance X. After it is released, the box slides up a frictionless incline as shown and eventually stops. If we repeat this experiment with a box of mass 2M, A, the lighter box will go twice as high up the incline as the heavier box. B, the lighter box will move twice as fast when it comes off the spring. Uh, spring. C, both boxes will have the same speed when they come off the spring. Uh, D, both boxes will reach the same uh, maximum height of the incline. Okay, so this one's a bit tricky. What we should know is at the very beginning, it's uh, it's going to have all elastic potential energy. And as it comes off the spring, it's going to turn to all kinetic energy. And all that kinetic energy as it goes up and reaches the highest point is going to turn all into gravitational potential energy. Uh, so that's a lot to just know from the beginning. So let's just kind of look at these two at the beginning, the elastic potential energy and kinetic energy. So we know 1 half kx squared is going to be equal to 1 half mv squared. What we should know is the mass of the object is going to change by a factor of 2. So when this mass changes by a factor of 2, the x doesn't change, the k doesn't change, nothing like that. So if this is going to have the same amount of energy, that means something else on here also needs to change. And what that is going to be is the velocity. So the velocity is going to change, and not by a half, but because this is squared, it's going to change by a factor of square root of 2. This way, it shows that it's slow. this spring is slowing down. Or I should say this box is slowing down after it releases when this is 2m. So a box will have the same scene when they come off? No, that's not true. Okay, and it also says the lighter box will move twice as fast when it comes off. Well, it's not exactly, it's not V divided by 2, it's square root of 2. So that's not it either. And uh, we also know both boxes reach the same height of the incline. Well, that's also not true if it's leaving, if it's going slowly. So we know it's A, but let's prove that a little bit. So what we can see here is if the kinetic energy is changing, so if we have now kinetic energy is equal to the potential energy, and then we have 1 half, and then the mass is 2m, and the velocity is going to be uh, v squared divided by 2. Uh, I just put the, I just squared everything out. And this is going to be mass, which is 2m, gravity, g, and height. We can see this 2m cancels out. Gravity is going to stay the same. So that means this height has to also change by a factor of 2, because that, uh, that velocity also changed by a factor of 2, okay, in order to even out. Hope that made sense. Uh, this one was a bit complicated, so watch it again if you need to.